Welcome back. This video will focus on examining a sample essay written in MLA style. This essay can be found in Purdue's online writing lab and at the link provided on Blackboard. There are several colored boxes in the margins of the essay to explain much of what MLA requires. If you choose to look at the paper on your own, these will be helpful. For our purposes today, we will focus mostly on the citations, both in text and the list of works cited at the end, but I will point out a few other MLA requirements as well. In MLA style, your paper's heading should be aligned left beginning with your name. The professor's name follows on the next line. After, you put the course number and then the due date. The title is always centered next. Notice that everything is double spaced. There aren't large spaces between the heading or the titles. In the upper right hand corner, you should have a header which will include your last name and the page number. Generally, you should use 12 point Times New Roman font with one inch margins. Okay, a few basics first. Remember, the purpose of the in-text citation is to lead your reader to the full reference entry at the end of your paper. In text, for MLA style, you only need the author's last name and the page number. If you don't have an author, you should use a shortened version of the article's title. If you aren't using a print source or something with page numbers, you omit this part. Also, you always have two options when citing in text. You can use the author's name in the body of your paper, or you can cite everything at the end. I can show you examples of both in this sample essay. The most important thing to remember is that you must always cite ideas and information that is not your own, even if you put the material in your own words. Okay, let's scroll to page three to take a look at some of the in-text citations. Here, you see a pretty basic citation for a quotation. It is the author's last name and the page number. Notice the period is located on the outside of the parentheses. There isn't a period inside the quote or at the end of the sentence. The period always goes after the citation. Also, notice there isn't a comma between the author's last name and the page number. We have another citation for Dan Hoff here. Notice there aren't quotations around this material. That means our student put this information in his own words, but he still has to cite it. He did the same for this Hurt citation. Remember, the citation belongs right after the information used. Okay, so after we only have page numbers. That's because the author of the information used is still hurt. If you are using information from the same author in the same paragraph, then you only need to cite that author once. After, you only need the page number. As long as another author isn't cited in between. But once you begin a new paragraph, you need to write out the full citation again. If we scroll to page four, we can find an excellent example of using an author's name in the body of the paper. Here, our student writes in his published dissertation, the American Agricultural Press, 1819 to 1816, Albert Lothar Demery presents a description and then he has the quote. At the end, he only needs to cite the page number because the author is already written in the text. We, the readers, already know that he's using material from this author. If we scroll to the bottom of page five, we can see an example of a block quote. If you have a quote that runs longer than four lines, you need to use a block indentation. If you have a block quotation, you begin the quote on a new line and continue to double space. You also indent the quote a half inch from the margin, usually like one tab over. Eliminate the quotation marks. The block indentation shows your reader that the material is a quotation. Finally, the citation information still belongs at the end of the quote, but the period is before the citation here. 
Use these with caution in your essays. A quotation this long should only be used if you cannot find a better way to give your readers the information. Scrolling all the way to the Works Cited page will allow us to see some examples there. Remember, the in-text citation's job is to lead to the full entry in the Works Cited list. The purpose of the Works Cited list is to lead the readers to the exact location of the materials used. You always title this page Works Cited, unless you only have one entry. Then it would be Work Cited without the S. Remember, the Works Cited title is centered. The entries are always in alphabetical order and double spaced without any large spaces in between. Also, don't forget the hanging indentation. The hanging indentation is where you indent every line except the first, like the one shown here. A hanging indentation allows the reader to easily find your entries. There are very specific rules for the layout of a works cited entry, but they usually begin with the author, last name, comma, first name. If there isn't an author, you use the title of the material, like this entry. You can find all of the rules in the MLA style guide behind the reference desk in the library. Purdue's online writing lab also has excellent resources, including this sample paper. As always, come see us at the reference desk in the library if you have any questions.